Do you want to be saved? Everybody wants to be saved. There's a text in Acts the second chapter in the New Testament where we find Jews uh, on the day of Pentecost as they heard the gospel preached for the very first time it was ever preached in the history of man. They wanted to be saved as well. At the end of the Apostle Peter's sermon, he said, this same Jesus whom you've crucified, God has made Lord in Christ. We're told they were pricked in their hearts and they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? They knew that their sin had endangered their soul and they wanted to know what they could do in order to be saved. There are five things that the Bible reveals are necessary in order for an individual to be redeemed. And so let's go down the list of those five things. Number one, you have to hear the gospel. We're told in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16 that the gospel is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. God chose through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. And so you have to hear about Jesus, that he lived a perfect life as he came to this earth as God on earth, that he died on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood as a vicarious sacrifice for our sins that after three days in the grave he was raised from the dead, and that he has ascended into heaven where he reigns at the right hand of his Father in his kingdom. This is the rudiments of the gospel of Christ, what a man must hear in order to be able to respond in faith. The second thing that you have to do is believe. When the gospel is preached, you will either reject it or you will accept it. Now understand this, people teach that salvation is at the point of faith, and it is not. But it is necessary that an individual believes. If a man is not willing to believe in Jesus Christ as Savior, then he will not be saved. And we are told that in places such as John chapter 3 and verse 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You also must repent of your sins. That's the third thing that must be done. The Apostle Paul in Acts the 17th chapter indicated that there were times in the past, times of ignorance, where God allowed certain things to take place. But in these last days, we are told that God commands all men everywhere to repent. Well, that idea of repentance means to turn away from sin. Be sorrowful for sin. Make a determination that you're going to live for God rather than living for self. Unless a man is truly sorrowful for his sins and willing to change, then God will not save him. Fourth thing you need to do is to confess Jesus Christ. In Romans the 10th chapter, we are told that with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. The Ethiopian eunuch did this in Acts the 8th chapter. We're told that as Philip preached to him Christ, they came to some water. He said, uh, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? And Philip told him, if you believe, you may. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus told us that if we're not willing to confess him before men, he will not confess us before his Father, which is in heaven. We must be willing to stand up and be counted. We must be willing to audibly confess Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. The fifth thing that needs to be done is you need to be baptized. The Jews understood this as they heard Peter's response to their question, what must we do to be saved? What shall we do? He said in Acts 2 and verse 38, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Now what that indicates, the remission of sins, is that your sins are taken away. Jesus said the same thing with regard to his blood in Matthew chapter 26 when he said his blood would be shed for many for the remission of sins. And so we are to be baptized just as Jesus had to shed his blood in order that we may attain the remission of sins. We must be baptized in order to attain the remission of sins as well. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 16 we are told that he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be condemned. So there you have it, the five things that you need to do in order to be saved. You need to hear the gospel, believe it, to repent of your sins, confess Jesus Christ as Lord, and be baptized to have your sins washed away. And every single example in the book of Acts with regard to conversion, all who were receiving the gospel of Christ, those who believed, they all were baptized. Will you do what the Jews on the day of Pentecost did? Will you believe the gospel? 
Will you repent of your sins? Will you stand up and be counted and say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God? Will you be baptized to wash away your sins? And as the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 6, rise and walk in newness of life, a child of God with the hope of heaven. We hope that you'll do that very thing.